Hey, so hello and welcome back to the channel. And this is the second episode of us building the pin input to factor authentication UI. However, you'd like to call it really. Okay, so we have an input. Uh, we have uh, a fo uh, change in focus function that will become very handy very soon. Now, the interesting part is obviously the on change function, right? So let's write that down. And we'll create um, an inline function calling our own on change uh, with the event and the index. That's what we'll need. I'm just gonna that. Okay, so uh, let's see. This is our on change function, and we'll start by providing the types, obviously. The event, and this is interesting because it actually React change event which is generic and we can provide uh, the element on which the change occurs then let's just good old index as a number now what is interesting for us is the value of course right and you can read it as event target value also if you look precisely at what we're providing here we are not providing the value yet this means that this element is uncontrolled element where the value is stored and we can read it with the dom rather than using what's uh, in uh, in the pin have here so maybe let's fix that real quick we'll need the pin and the value itself the value itself is uh, we can read it like this okay mm. Oh, number or null is not assignable. Well, yeah, because the the value, because the value can be undefined but can be null. Let's change that real quick. So let's change that to undefined and change that to undefined. And this is good for now. Okay. So the value here, as you can see, it is a string. And uh, I mentioned that I would prefer to store the numbers, okay? So how can we convert that? I'm just gonna, let's just wrap this into a number. And also, I will trim that just matter right to omit any possible spaces now uh, I would like to check whether uh, what we got is a number because I'm not interested into processing values like letters or other other characters then let's also check the um check the in initial value length okay so this and this is repeated i could just Let's actually rename that. So the value 
that. Right? And this is gonna be um pin number then. And I guess we can get rid of that. Okay, this is good. And this is gonna be pin number of course. Okay, if it's not a number or the value is actually equal to zero, then there's no need to do anything. No need to process any of that, right? Uh, and now let's just see what we can get. Um, gonna be pin number. Okay, do we do we actually get anything here? Okay, this is good, cool, right? We can read this in on change. That's that's really wonderful. Uh, so now, um, what should we do? Oh, uh, I'd like to restrict the values to a central set certain set because uh, I'm only interested in digits, right? Nothing else. So define ping uh, min value, it's going to be zero. And then pin max value is going to be nine. And then if pin number is greater or equal to pin mean value and pin number is less or equal to pin max value we should be good to go and uh, is this correct uh, pin pin number of course okay and then uh, I'm going to call on pin change that we get from our parent. All right, because it was changed. So um, in number and an index. Okay, so we have that sorted out. And I would also like to move to the next input, right? Because someone just provided an provided a single digit input to that text field. And I would like to move to the next one. So uh, we need to move to, we need to check where the index is less than pin length. Okay. So we don't want to do it if we're in the mm, very uh, last text field. I'm gonna call the input field from now text field just to differentiate for between the input and the text field itself. Then I would like to change pin focus uh, to the next one, right? That looks correct to me. So let's see. Okay, yeah, this, this is looking good. The problem is we can provide a little bit more than I would like here and here and here and here, but should accept only one single digit, but we will figure that one out soon. Okay, so now, uh, let's take a look on our pin and set pin because it's not doing a lot right now. Uh, what we'd like to actually do is to modify the state, right? And then our state loop is complete. We're providing the means to um, change the, the state to the children. We're providing the state to the children. And here we're just managing that. 
So I'm going to say that new pin, right, should be almost the same as the old pin because we're just manipulating one value at a time. Except for the fact that new pin under index should have new pin entry. Um, yeah, and should set new state just like that. Let's see now how this works. Two, three, four. And this is perfect because now, since this is changed to a controlled, um, controlled component, right? We're using our values from our state. There's no way someone can input more than just one digit. This is cool. Uh, I have the um, warning that we're changing the control component from uh, the component from uncontrolled to controlled. That's because on the very start, our value here is undefined, and then we're changing it to something defined. We can fix that by providing uh, the default value as an empty string. That should get rid of first problem. Then the key. Well, the key is a little bit tricky here because you should always use something really unique for the keys in React. Often is that some kind of ID or hash provided by API, but we don't have the luxury of that here so unfortunately we have to use the index you shouldn't do this if you have any other better unique value for that but that's gonna fix the second problem okay uh we're good on time so uh the one feature that's missing well except the the styling of course and the the obscuring of the input is um is using the backspace because now you can see i can't really use my backspace to get rid of um of that value or to move to the previous text field so let's change this. Uh, and it's not really that hard. First things first, things first uh, I can use the on key down function here. Um, and this is going to be really to we'll have the same signature as that one. OK, uh, except this is going to be on key down. And let's define that. So again, uh, this may be a little bit tricky type, but this is the keyboard event occurring on HTML input element index number. Good. Oh, by the way, I just forgot to mention that I will uh, provide a link into the description where you can find the friend of mine, Pipeline, talking about implementing two-factor authentication in Django in Python. He's doing wonderful work. If you'd like to learn about Django and Python, definitely check the guy out. Okay. First things first, we need to get the that uh, was hit by the user you can get that by even native native event uh, code so let's check that out real quick and now if i provide something here you can see it's paid digits enters backslashes shift right we are interested though in backspace okay so we'll be checking against that 
I'm going to find a card here. Um, the name Backspace Key. Nothing fancy, it's just Backspace. Right and check uh, whether this is a uh, backspace. Uh, so if keyboard key code is not um, backspace key, just return early. It's always good to check your stuff early and just return as fast from function as it's possible. Where to do that, in my opinion, than creating this if pyramid of doom. Not nice. Okay, then we have to check whether currently there's some kind of value in that text field. Because if there is, our job is to delete it using backspace. If there's not, and the text field is empty, our job is to shift focus backwards to the previous text field. Okay? Uh, so, uh, let's see. Uh, how can you check that? If pin index is equal undefined, um, or pin index mm, oh this is going to be a number okay so if it's undefined right um then what we need to do is just change the focus backwards else we're gonna delete Current value that lives under index. And this this looks pretty reasonable to me. So let's see. Uh, fine. Let's see. Now this is working correctly. Oh. Sorry. Okay. And even if it's empty, we can move backward through the inputs. So yeah, this is how you basically build the pin input grid, right? In the next episode, we will try to uh, set it a little bit and obscure the input so that it's not visible when when you're providing it uh, i will see you there goodbye